Let's talk for a moment about some basic blood work and what we can see in the blood work. That is not just off, but alarming. So this person um, sent me their blood work <coughs> and they wanted to know what I thought. Um, and in general, when I look at this, I see a lot of things going on. But these numbers down here, this AST and ALT are both marked as high. And this woman is scheduled for surgery next Tuesday. Those numbers are an indication that her liver is in severe distress. A little other history about this woman. She has um, five confirmed diagnoses for autoimmune and her gallbladder was removed um, probably about a decade ago. <coughs> so that's concerning. Um, knowing that she's going under general anesthesia, which is a lot for the liver to have to process, and knowing that she's going to have meds coming out of surgery. Those numbers right there to me are like a high red flag. We need huge liver support for this person, and we need it soon. The other thing I want to point out to you is, let's see if I can get this. Oh, you can't see it really well. Down here, this 4.6, this number is actually her total white blood cell count. Your white blood cell count needs to be between five and eight. Anything below five is a chronic infection of some kind. Anything above eight is an acute infection of some kind. Now, whether that's viral, fungal, etc., we don't know for sure. In her case, it could be a combination of things, but then when we look down here at the percentages of white blood cells, neutrophils is 20.9. This number should be at 60. 60. It's at 20.9. That means something else is off. And here is part of it right here. The lymphocytes are at almost 60%, which means that there is a huge viral load there. Not only that, but her eosinophils, or I'm sorry, her monocytes are at 11.1%, which means that she probably has what looks like an active Epstein-Barr infection, um, but it's probably old. Um, and then her eosinophils, this number should be three, it's 6.8. So we're dealing again with some uh, very big, things going on in the system, including parasites. Um, she does live on a place where she has well water and has for several decades. She has chickens, she has dogs, and she has a cat that's ill that's living in the house. So parasites are guaranteed with this woman. The other interesting thing, um, she's going in for an orthopedic surgery and they didn't check her vitamin D. And we know if we're having an orthopedic surgery done that we want the vitamin D level to be at least 85 because coming out of surgery, it's gonna drop because there's gonna be some bone healing that needs to happen. The other thing not shown anywhere in this blood work is a total iron panel. And this is somebody who's had a couple of blood transfusions. So the fact that they didn't run one is a little bit concerning. But you can tell I've already gained a lot of information from just this blood work. Um, there's some other things in there that I can tell you, like she's not methylating her bees well, and I can tell that based on her red blood cell count and the MCV and MCHC. Um, so a little bit of support there would be helpful, especially because she's going into surgery and we could drop her homocysteine level by helping her support B vitamin methylation. Um, but also, there is currently an infection of some kind happening in her mouth. Um, and they're gonna do surgery probably somewhere between six to 12 weeks after this orthopedic surgery. So when someone tells you that they need 
$2,000, $5,000, $10,000 worth of lab testing to figure out what's wrong with you. All they need is a good history and a basic blood work. Now the question is, how would I go about helping this person? Well, the very first thing that I'm going to do, knowing that she's having surgery on Tuesday, is I'm going to offer a lot of liver support. A lot. Um, I would actually even, if I could get her overnighted a liver detox kit, I would overnight that to her. Um, and I would have her start it tomorrow. Um, she'd get it tomorrow afternoon. I'd have her start it tomorrow night. So that way she was doing it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then she would have Monday to fully recover from that. And then Tuesday she would have her surgery. But her liver would be working better. So I'd start with that. And then, even though she's having this orthopedic surgery, I would actually go after that virus. Whatever it is. Because the viral load is super high. And I don't care if it's Epstein-Barr. I don't care if it's MRSA. I don't care what it is. I just know it's there. And it needs to be addressed. Also, she reported that she's been having some issues with like constipation, diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea. So I know that there's some kind of SIBO, CFO, And I know that in the home two years ago, there was a bathroom that was entirely covered in mold. And it was growing out into the hallway. So there's probably mold present. And we need to clean that up too. But I'm going after that virus first because that's the numbers that are the most out of balance and those are what's going to keep her symptomatic and not healing appropriately from this orthopedic surgery we would do another liver detox believe it or not in three weeks time why because she's going to be processing out drugs that she's going to take in this first week and her liver is going to need that extra support and then Three weeks after that, I'd have her do another one. We would start working on after the virus was taken care of, which could take, in that case, probably two to three months, honestly. We would start working on the mold next, believe it or not, because the mold is going to hold some things. And then after I got rid of any of the mold that was active in the system right now, then we'd go after parasites. Why? because the parasites are probably holding some more mold. And I don't want to over this well in the system with mold when it already has mold. Does that make sense? So that protocol would take somewhere between six and eight months. And that's assuming that there's no hiccups. And being able to look at the blood work like that and tell you exactly what I would do with somebody and why makes it so that people don't spend a fortune when they come and work with me. We'd also run her genetics. So the one test we would do is her genetics. Why would we do the genetics? Because it would then allow me to customize her supplement plan to her specifically, given her environment and her blueprint and also her meal plans to make sure that all the work she's done to lose the weight that she's lost in the last six months working with me, she keeps off. If you're up for changing your health and want somebody who can explain it to you as simple as that and really can take testing you already have in your hands, grab a consult from my links.